Let's construct our school calendar the easy way. That's what we're talking about today. Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. Before we get started, let me ask you a question. Are you on my email list? If not, let's take care of that today. Come over to frankbuck.org and sign up on the homepage. I have two free gifts for you. One of them's going to get your desk clean. The other will put everything you have to do in one digital place. And it's all for free. So on with the show. This entire month, we've been talking about doing the things today that make tomorrow better. This time of year, school systems are putting together calendars for the next year. Education is a very cyclic business. We have the same holidays that occur about the same time every year. Grading periods end about the same time every year. Report cards go home about the same time every year. And it's that about the same time that's the problem. That Veterans Day program is going to be somewhere around November 11th. But it may be November 8th one year and November 10th another year, just depending on where weekends fall. So you couldn't just make it a yearly repeating event. But today we have a solution on what you can do. One summer day, I received an email from Marissa Donovan, principal at Clarks Creek Elementary in Indiana, and she's a member of my email list. Marissa writes, I love your tips on productivity, so I'm reaching out to you for an idea, if you have one. As a school principal at this time of year, I'm working on next year's calendar. It's convenient to have all of our upcoming dates listed on a spreadsheet, but then we use our Google calendars for actually keeping things on a real calendar and creating invites, etc., it seemed to me that after working for hours on the spreadsheet of events, there should be an easy way to automate creating events on Google Calendar from the spreadsheet. Indeed, there is. So for Marissa and for everybody out there, here's the answer. There is a process, but it's a very specific process. First, just as Marissa did, Create a spreadsheet and put all of those repeating events on the spreadsheet, all of the assemblies you have, all of the PTA meetings, the committee meetings, the faculty meetings. The best thing to do is just start with your current calendar that you have now for this year. Look at all the events that are on there and the things that you're going to have next year also. Just list them on the spreadsheet. Now, here's the thing. Your columns must be in a specific order and named in a specific way. In the blog post that accompanies this video and this podcast, you will see a sample of just a few events. Make sure that your spreadsheet has the same columns in the same order labeled exactly the same way. If you're listening to the audio podcast, be sure to come over to the video where you'll see screenshots of everything that I'm going to be talking to you about. Now, start brainstorming. As I said, look at your calendar for the current school year and everything that you see there that you'll do annually, put it on the spreadsheet. Suppose you're not a school, but you're a business that has some annual events. Maybe it's board meetings, inventory dates, pay days, or any other dates that repeat, but not on the exact same day every year. Once you get your dates on the spreadsheet, you're going to download and save it as a CSV file. Now, this is important. You can't just import into Google Calendar from a spreadsheet. It must be from a CSV file. Once you have your CSV file, we turn to Google Calendar, click the cog, and choose Settings. Now click Import and Export. Now you're going to choose which calendar to import to. You also navigate to the location of that CSV file. I have a multi-day event in my example, a set of four teacher work days at the beginning of the year, starting on the 5th and running through the 
8th. Now, I found that when I imported these, it, it cut it one day short. It showed it the 5th through the 7th. You have to think of the end date as going to that date rather than through that date. So what you're going to find as you put in those holidays that are more than one day is that your end date is going to have to be one day longer than you probably thought. I hope that makes sense. With my import file selected and my calendar selected, click the import button. A box appears with how many events were successfully imported. Now I can go to my calendar and look at them. In my example, the teacher workday stopped a day short of what I intended, just as I had warned you. Again, on those multi all-day events, go one more day on the end date than you think you need to. If I go to the next month where I had two events, they both show up on the correct dates. Let's look at another example. Suppose I'm the volleyball coach and I use a spreadsheet to plan the schedule. Use the same fields in the same order as before. Since the start date and the end date of each game are going to be the same, I could copy and paste an entire block of dates from the start date column into the end date column. If most of the games start at the same time, you can do some copying and pasting or some filling down. In the description column, you can include admission prices or any of the information that you would want people attending the game to have. Go through the same routine to import the events. When I go back to my Google Calendar, I see the games listed on the proper days with the proper start times. If I click on an event, it opens and I see any notes in the description section. And if I included the address in the location column of the spreadsheet, it will be a clickable link in Google Calendar and will open Google Maps where people will get turn-by-turn -turn directions. Now, what if I have different types of events for different calendars? Well, once you've created a spreadsheet with the proper column headers, make some copies of that spreadsheet. If you have one Google Calendar for the faculty and one for parents and one for extracurricular activities, then you're going to have three spreadsheets. Just save them in one folder, and you'll save those three spreadsheets to three different CSV files. Then you'll import each one into the appropriate Google Calendar. It's just that easy. A year from now, you won't have to make that spreadsheet again. It's already made for you. Update the dates because you're going to have those same events for the most part year after year. Just change the dates. Save as CSV and you're ready to import again. And in the volleyball example, you're likely to play some of those same opponents again next year. You won't be starting with a blank slate. Pull up last year's spreadsheet and make the needed changes. Technology tools tend to work together, so taking just a little time to learn some techniques such as this one that we just discussed can make many tomorrows so much easier. Hey, if you like this video, take a look at these two right over here and consider subscribing to the channel so that you never miss a thing. This has been Frank Buck, helping you get organized and make it look easy.